Hey everybody. Um, so today we're going to go over how to make um, a set of serial sections from a topographic surface. Um, so I'm starting off with a surface already here which I created um, using the height field command um, and a DEM uh, image. Um, many of you might be starting out with uh, contours um, and I'll link to another video that will show you how to make a surface from those contours uh, so you can get something like this so that you can then generate um, serial sections in the X or Y axis. Um, but for now I'm just going to assume that you all have uh, a surface that you um, have already created that you can use. Um, so I have my surface and uh, to prepare for creating um, serial sections in um, Grasshopper um, I'm also going to place a point, or I have placed a point, um, at the corner, very corner of one of the, of, of my surface. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up this contour command. And I, again, I have already created this, um, uh, this grasshopper script, but I'm going to walk you through it. Um, so you, I encourage you to create this as we go along. So we're going to use this contour command, um, and we're going to pull it. Um, so the first thing it asks for is a surface. So we're going to create a rep command or a rep component. Um, and then we're going to set one rep. And we're going to set that as our surface. Great. Um, the next thing it's asking for is the contour start point. Um, and we're going to choose the corner of our surface for that. So we're going to set one point to this point at the corner of our surface. Um, the next thing it asks for is the direction. So um, this is which direction you want the contours to be. Since we want serial sections, we will be either wanting them in the Y or the X direction rather than the Z direction, which is our which are like elevation contours essentially. Um, uh, but I'll show you what these look like. Um, and then we, and then it's asking for the distance um, between contours. Um, and this distance uh, will be whatever units your Rhino model is in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the preview on just to show you what I generated here. So if you've done this right, you should get um, a series of serial sections like this. Now notice if I change the direction here, if instead of the y direction I choose the x direction, then I get my serial sections in the other direction. And if I choose the z direction, then I get some elevation contours. And again, the distance here is quite large for actually getting thing. But if I were to put this down to like, let's say 0.3 or something, then you would actually see, yeah, so got some elevation there. Um, so that allows you to get the contours. Um, if you want to isolate a specific contour from that, um, I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to just flip this back to 1.5 so we have something good to work with. Um, and I'm going to flip this back to the y direction, which is where I want, how I want to pull my um, serial sections. So let's say we want to single out a single one of these guys. So in order to do that, we're going uh, to grab a list item command, like such. Um, and then we are going to um, pull our contours over into the list item. I'm going to undo this really quick just to show you proof of concept here. So it asks for your list. And what list item does basically is it pulls a single element out of a list of things. So you have a list of contours which is coming out of this contours component. And we're going to grab a single one. So the i is the item index. So this is like the number in the list, essentially. Um, and remember that grasshopper lists start at zero. So the 15th element is actually index 14. So I'm grabbing the 15th element right now. Um, so I'm going to turn this on and show you guys um, so we have a problem here. It didn't actually pull um, 
a single element. And the reason it didn't do that is because right now, what you have, if we look at the data here, um, what we essentially have, you see this n equals 1, so we essentially have 38 lists which each have one contour inside them. Um, and so it's showing us, uh, it's basically showing us the component within each of those 38 lists. So what we're going to do is we're going to flatten this down. Instead of having 38 lists, we just want one list so we can grab the 15th element from that. So we're going to flatten this when we pull it in. And now you can see that we have grabbed that 15th element. And we can use our slider to move around in this. Um, and you can set this slider up to be the exact number of contours you generated. So over here it says I have 38 locally defined values. So my um, slider would go from 0, well, I was doing this earlier, but it would go from 0 to 37 essentially. Um, so you can do that and then of course you can just bake this when you want to get that single contour. Um, something I want to show you guys is if we go back to, I'm going to turn these off. If we go back to um, the Z situation and having this, and then I'm going to do like, let's say 0.2 or something. If you're trying to isolate contours like this, essentially, instead of having one um, section um, at every step, you, you might have in the Z direction a number of contours which all exist at elevation like 4, let's say. Um, so what happens is if you try to go and do this, um, you're going to have basically we have six or we have seven lists here and then each of those has, so this is like basically seven elevation points that we're pulling from, zero through six. Um, and then each of those you can see n equals six, n equals 27, so each of those elevations has a certain number of contour lines within it. Um, and so if we do list item, let me do preview, we're just going to get the 15th element in all of those lists instead of getting all of the, all of the um, contours within one elevation. So basically what I'm saying here is we need to treat this a little bit differently. In order to get all the contours at a single elevation, because we have multiple, while in the y direction we just had the single one which goes across the entire thing, we have to, instead of using list item, we have to use a thing called tree branch index. Um, and so this is the way data is essentially arranged, is we need to pull from um, a branch in our list, like for instance, branch the first branch, and we need to grab all of the items from that. So um, we grab this tree branch index, um, it asks for the data tree, so we pull that in, and then it asks for the branch index, um, and if we turn this on, you can see now I can cycle through all of the um, contours that exist within one branch of this data tree, or essentially all the contours that exist within one elevation moment, um, which this corresponds to a branch. Um, I hope that's kind of clear. Um, data organization in Grasshopper is something that kind of takes a while to get used to, but um, once you figure it out, it, it becomes a really powerful way of understanding what you're using. So anyway, um, you can use list item to pull a single um, con uh, serial section, um, or if you need to, uh, you can use the tree branch. Um, so I'm going to reset this. I'm going to turn this back off. I'm going to go back to us have in the y direction. Oh, it's going to be mad at me because this is tiny. Give it one moment. Apologies. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to pull this back up. We made a lot of serial sections just then. <laughs> Um, and we're going to change this back to 1.5. Okay, great. Um, so we learned how to make serial sections. We learned how to grab a single one of them if we want to. Um, we can always you know, change the distance of these to get as, as many as we want. Um, and then the last thing I want to show you guys is 
um, how to flip each one of these in it, right where it's at in place so that you can see the elevation from your plan view, actually. Um, so in order to do that, um, we're going to rotate these, but we're not going to use a rotate component. We're going to use a rotate 3D component. So make one of those, um, and it's going to ask for our geometry. So we're going to pull in our contours, which we have over here. Um, uh, it's going to ask for the angle of rotation, and it's going to be in radians. So we want this to flip at a 90 degree angle um, so that it shows when flattened up against in top view. Um, so right now we're actually good because half one half pi equals 90 degrees. Um, if you wanted to flip it a certain more amount, you might have to set up a number slider here. Um, but we're good for now. Um, the center of rotation, the center of rotation we want to be essentially the end of each of these serial sections. So in order to do, in order to find that end, we um, need to evaluate our curves. So open up uh, or create an evaluate curve component. And it's going to ask, I'm going to undo this really quick to show you guys something. So it's going to look like this when you first um, make one of these, and it's going to ask for your curves. Uh, so we're going to pull in our contours, um, and then it's going to ask for a parameter. So when if you preview this, right now our parameter is zero, and so all these points that we're making are at zero, which is great. Um, if you want these, if you want this to be moved along the thing, we can change this, but you can see this is moving only ever so slightly because this is actually changing um, in feet, uh, which is the unit of our thing, um, rather than as a percentage of the overall length of this. So if you wanted it to change as a percentage of your overall length, what you do is you reparameterize this data. What reparameterization does is it takes the values and it remaps them from 0 to 1. So essentially, instead of 0 0.6 feet, we can now have this at 60% along the length of the curve. So if we want to flip it around at this end, we can do 1. If we want to flip it around at this end, we can do 0. But now we can kind of like move all the way across the length of our thing very easily and just fine. If we wanted to flip at the center point, we can do that. Um, so anyway, that's how it works. But we want, to flip, we want to flip it at the very end, so it doesn't really matter, but I just wanted to show you guys that. So once you've evaluated that, you're going to get a series of points. You can pull these points over into the center. And the last thing that it asks for is the axis. Um, and so we want um, the x-axis. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So if we preview that, so you basically just make an X um, unit here. Um, and so now we have, if we look at top view, we have these serial sections, which are these straight lines, but then we've also rotated them. So you can now see them uh, while you're looking down at what you're working on. So essentially what this creates is a kind of mapping technique um, for mapping in a two-dimensional space. So if I kind of declutter everything we have visible here, I just turn all of this off. Um, and then if I actually hide this just really quick, you can see that we now have a flat surface that does render the topographical changes over time. So we can, we can use this um, as a representation technique. Um, Maybe, you know, we can kind of follow some sort of river um, or creek way or something, some sort of waterway down through this or, or whatever. Um, but anyway, that is essentially uh, making serial sections for both modeling and representation. Um, thanks. And if you have any questions, you can get in touch.